So before I get started in showing you how to use 3D models in Game Maker, I figured it would be wise to show you how to make them in the first place. And for that, I'm going to be using this little program called Model Creator for Game Maker, very creatively named. This is a little program that was made back in Game Maker 8.0, which, as the name suggests, allows you to create 3D models for use in Game Maker. Um, if you're not sure where to get this program, I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. It's very simple. It's just a uh, it's just an executable that you download. You don't have to install it or anything. Anyway, to start off with, I'm going to be showing you how to make a couple different objects. Now, it seems traditional in 3D modeling tutorials to demonstrate how to make something like a chair or a table using basic geometric shapes like that, and I'm going to be showing you how to do that now. I should point out I will not be demonstrating texture mapping in this particular video. Texture mapping is an entire beast of its own that I will be covering in a separate video. So let's get started. Uh, once you open up Model Creator, it's going to look something like this. There will be two views. Um, one is an XY plane, and another is a 3D view. And I'll be talking more about these in a minute. Uh, down here, let you select what angle you look at the world from, uh, the model from. Top, bottom, front, back, left, right, 3D, and texture. There's a couple more options with how the, uh, how the display is rendered. And again, I'm going to be showing you how to do that in a minute. There's zoom in and zoom out. You can also use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down, zoom in and zoom out, and move around. You can select this button to move around, or you can just uh, click and drag with the mouse wheel, the middle mouse button. So moving on, I'm going to try to not spend too much time talking about these. Uh, these are for the basic primitives that you can put down. There are triangles, cylinders, floors, uh, triangle strips, triangle fans, blocks, cones, all those fun things. I am going to start out by drawing a simple table, and I'm going to select uh, the draw block option, and I'm going to click and drag from 0, 0, the origin, to how about uh, 16, or 32, 32, rather. And that's going to be somewhere 32, 33, right there. And once I've done that, it's going to show a form with a couple different properties, and you can put them in. I'm going to go from 0, 0 to 32, 32 on the XY plane. And on the z-axis, I'm going to go from 0 to 2. H repeat and V repeat, if you are familiar with uh, how 3D primitives work in Game Maker, you will probably recognize those. Uh, they're for texture mapping, and again, I won't be talking about texture mapping right now. I'll be saving those for later. Anyway, so now we have a block. And if you look at the top, you can see it's a square. If you look at, say, front view, uh, you can see it's a little rectangle. If you look at it in 3D view, you can see kind of uh, why it is looking like that. And this is flat on the ground, and I don't want it to be flat on the ground, because that's usually not where the surfaces of tables are. So I'm going to select the shape and move it around. And you can select shapes by uh, hitting this rectangle select thing. The shortcut on the keyboard, I believe, is R. And you can click and drag, and you can select anything that you, uh, that you drag over. You can also say, where is the object select? Or a shortcut for that would be O. And you can click on the shape directly. Either way, it doesn't matter. And anyway, once I have the shape selected, I'm just going to move it around. I think I'll move it up to 16. There we go. And that is the top of a table. Okay, so this is still a rectangle object. It's not, um, it hasn't been converted to triangles or anything like that. I will be talking about converting to triangles later because there, there is um, more that you can do like that. But for now, I'm just going to draw the legs. And how about those will be two by two. And they will go from here. The coordinates don't really matter because I'm just going to drag it around later. I'm just doing this off to the side so that I can see. That's going to go from 0 to 14. Okay. And again, I'm going to select the shape. Oops. I'm going to select the shape. And I'm going to move it under the table. And I can copy it by either hitting copy over here. Copy selection under actions. Or by hitting the C key on the keyboard. Not control C, just... Uh, just regular C, and I can move this around, and I need one more because apparently I didn't copy it down here. Very good. So this is a basic table. If you wanted to make it fancier, maybe adding some uh, some supports, you can do that. And I'm going to go show the bottom view so I can actually see uh, where the, uh, the legs of the table are, and they're not obscured by the top. So I'm just going to draw... How about from here to here? And let's make it too high. And going down to the front, let's move it over there. And 
and I want it at the bottom, not the top. I can do that again. There. And now, instead of drawing this over, because uh, it's not oriented the right way, you can go and select an individual uh, vertex. In the case of these blocks, that'll be an end of the, uh, of the shape. So you select rectangle select, and that will let you draw these squares over the, uh, the 3D view. And it will let you select individual points or objects or whatever it happens to be. And you can move this around. And that's going to go from here to there. No, one more there to there. All right, perfect. And then again, I'm going to just copy that, move it over here. All right, is that good? That looks pretty good. That's a, uh, a decent table. I may or may not use this as a resource in certain 3D games that I am working on. Anyway, we're not quite done. You probably will have noticed uh, all of these are one, asymmetrical. I actually want to go and um, move this rectangle over there and this rectangle over there. There we go. Now it's symmetrical. Uh, you may have noticed that all of these are still rectangle objects. If you click and drag an edge of one, it will always stay a rectangle. And that's OK for if you're just making simple things like tables. But one, for texture mapping, it's not really optimal. And uh, two, if you want to be able to uh, manipulate these shapes in ways that aren't simple rectangles, that's going to be a problem. So to convert these rectangle objects to triangles, which are much easier to uh, manipulate, you can go over here under Actions, and um, either click that button or hit the T key on the keyboard, and that will convert all of this to triangles. So now if I were to select an individual vertex and drag it around, uh, you have much more freedom over what the shape looks like. It's not going to be a simple rectangle always. And you can do that with any of the, uh, the basic shapes, whether that's a wall, a sphere, a, uh, a cone, floor, whatever. All right. Um, that is pretty much it for tables. I don't really have anything else that I want to do here besides texturing it, which I will get to in a later video. So I'm just going to select the whole thing and move it off to the side. If you want an easy way to select the entire, uh, your entire like project workspace, you can hit A, or you can hit this uh, select all button down there, and then you can just drag them around like normal, or you can uh, delete them if you want to start over or something like that. Uh, moving on to chairs. So I am going to go, not that, I did not want to do that. Let's, let's uh, start that over. I'm going to do something similar, except it's going to be instead of a uh, 32 by 32, I think I'm just going to make this 16 by 16. Uh, the scale that you're working with is really up to you. I generally work with uh, scales that are about 32 pixel units would equal one yard of like real space. But if you want to use some other scale, like 10 pixel units equals a yard or something like that, um, or a meter or whatever system of measurement you happen to be using, uh, that's completely up to you. Let's make that too high again. And we can move around in this 3D view and see what's going on. Back over here. I'm going to go and look at the front once again, and I'm going to raise this to how about uh, y equals, I believe the top of this is a 16, right? So let's make this y equals eight, I mean uh, z equals eight rather. And I'm going to convert this to triangles right now because I do prefer to do that as soon as I, uh, as soon as I can, as soon as I don't need to be working with basic shapes. And I'm actually going to make this one uh, high. So the surface of the chair will be a little bit thinner than the surface of the, uh, the table. It's just a matter of personal preference. It doesn't really matter. And all right, that's great. Now I need to make the legs of the chair. So those can be, let's see, let's go from there to there. And the X and Y coordinates are what they want, but it's right now flat on the um, flat on the ground. So I want to make that from, what is it, 0 to 15 on the Z axis? Okay, so it's not 0 to 15, it's like 0 to 7, right? Good. And as I did before, I'm going to convert that to triangles, copy, move. You will see me using the keyboard shortcuts quite a lot. Um, in future videos that I may or may not do with Model Creator for Game Maker, if you would like me to not do that, uh, let me know and I'll try to not make a habit out of it. Anyway, uh, this is looking like a miniature table right now. 
it's a, uh, a short platform with some short stubby legs. And two of these legs, it doesn't matter which, I want to extend upwards. And those can form the, uh, the back of the chair. So I'm going to extend this up to how about 24? No, that's a little, that's a little tall. Actually, it's not that tall. Let's go to 24. All right. And now I just need, uh, like strips of wood, whatever material you want to call this, going across the back of the chair. So I will take the rectangle again, draw a rectangle. How about looking something like this? This time, the Y value is kind of short, so I'm going to just make that an arbitrary value of 8 and play with the rectangle later. So I'm going to go back to the top view. Let's move this back so I have some space to work with. And let's go from... Is this good? I'm going to go from undo. Z is undo, as you might expect, as it usually is. But again, it's just the letter Z, not control Z. I'm going to try and make this something that would resemble an actual chair, uh, for example, in real life. That looks pretty good. All right, so that's one, uh, that is one strip of wood on the back of the chair, so I'm just going to copy that, move it down, and there you have it. All right, that looks perfectly semi-comfortable for sitting in, I think. So you have a table and chair. I'm going to go and move this back in front of it, so it actually looks like a set that belongs to something. Except the leg of the table is kind of like uh, clipping through. It's uh, it's locked into the, uh, the support on the table. The leg of the chair, rather. So maybe not completely realistic. Anyway, that's the basics of using Model Creator for Game Maker. There are a couple other things I would like to talk about. These are the buttons that I kind of skipped over earlier. Uh, this will let you turn on or off lighting. Uh, there are identical sets of buttons for both of these views, by the way, the 3D view and the, um, like the blueprint view, I like to call it. So you can turn off lighting, you can turn on the schematic view, which basically, um, disables coloring, and any, uh, any objects or vertices that are selected will be highlighted in blue, so it makes it easier to see what you have selected. I do like to have that on for at least one of the views in the, um, in the program when I'm working with Model Creator. You can turn on or off the, uh, the points, the vertices that you have selected. I like to have those on just so that I can see where I'm working. Again, you can turn back on the lighting. I will say, lighting plus the schematic view does look kind of weird, especially on, um, especially on the 2D views, because you can't really control the angle that the light is appearing from, at least as far as I know. So it tends to make the, uh, the blueprint look kind of dark, so I don't really like to have that turned on. Let's see what else is there. As I mentioned before, you can select a single vertex or a single object. Uh, you can invert the selection by hitting this button or selecting the I key. There's a couple of reasons that you might want to do that. I'll get into it later, I'm sure. Uh, you can deselect all with this button or the X key. Or you can always just, um, just select an empty area like this, which is usually what I do if possible. You can select equal vertices. So if you have multiple vertices on top of each other, you can select, um, you can select them all like this. You can deselect incomplete objects. So, for example, if you were to rectangle select the top of this table, but you only want to um, you only want to have the top of the table selected and not the parts of these legs that are um, that are also partially selected, you can go hit D and you can move them around. Uh, that did grab the top of these legs, the top faces of these legs, because they are triangles that were completely selected. But if you're more careful than I was there, uh, you shouldn't have to worry about that. You can edit. You can move. I can't honestly say that I really use more than the just move selection button. These other options are really for a finely controlled movement, if you're interested in that. Texture mapping, as I said, I will go over those in a separate video. Over here, copy selection, I talked about that already. Um, convert to triangles, I talked about that already. Snap to grid, if you have, for example, vertices that are um, at like x equals 2.5 or something, and then you want to have them all snap to a grid, whatever grid happens to, to be defined in settings, um, for example, you can make this 4, you can hit snap to grid, and it will be aligned to the nearest uh, multiple of 4. I don't really want that, that looks kind of weird, I'm going to undo that. Delete selection, obviously, I've talked about that, translate selection. If you want to be able to uh, move points or objects a specific amount, you can mirror selection over an axis. So for example, if I wanted to um, 
mirror this chair. I can select the chair and let's go over the XZ plane or the Y axis and or, sorry along with the Y axis and it will be uh, mirrored there. I can do the same for the X axis if you want. Remove duplicates. If you have multiple objects that occupy the same space, you can rotate the selection. So if you want to, for example, move this around the Z axis by, let's say, 60 degrees, you can rotate the chair around the Z axis by 60 degrees. And again, apparently I have not converted all of those rectangles, sorry, to triangles. And as I mentioned before, if you were to move those, they would try to remain in a rectangular shape, which is generally not what you want. Anyway, the chair has now been uh, rotated 60 degrees around the Z axis. You can merge near vertices within a certain distance of each other. I'm not working with very precise distances, so that option didn't really do anything for me right there. You can invert the faces, which has to do with the way that the, uh, the, fa the triangles are defined, and back face culling and things like that. I will talk more about that in a future video as well. You can scale the selection by a factor if you want. If you want to make this chair a lot wider than it already is, that looks very weird. That, that is exceedingly weird. Generally, if you're going to do scaling, you want to do it evenly on um, in all dimensions, although there are a few situations where you might not want to. Uh, let's do that because that looks rather weird when the chair is bigger than the table. And there are a couple other tools that you can use. Uh, subdivision, if you wanted to divide this into smaller triangles. As if, if I'll turn the lighting off and turn the, uh, the show faces on, you can see that all of the triangles in the chair have been divided into um, two triangles. There's a couple other tools. Um, you can export this as an OBJ object if you want to edit in Blender or something like that. You can export it as an array, which will generate a uh, which will generate a GML uh, uh, script of code. And there's a couple other tools. Re revolution, subdivision. I talked about subdivision. You can extrude them. Those are fairly complicated things that you'll probably only be using if you're like really advanced into uh, 3D modeling. I don't even use them most of the time. Lastly, there are the undo and redo buttons, Z and Y on the, uh, the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you can open up a page to show a bunch of stats about the model. Uh, as you can see, I have 40, 444 triangles. Most of those are due to the subdivision. If I were to undo that, I'm down to 192 triangles. You generally want to have as few triangles as possible. You have a bunch of settings. You have options to save color and texture data, interpolating textures, repeating textures, uh, once again, for like the third or fourth time, I will be talking about textures in a separate video. You have the option of whether or not you want to actually use the grid. And if you turn that off, you can see this is not snapping to the grid in any way, shape, or form. Let me undo that. And lastly, there is a little bit of information about the program itself. Thank you very much. I know this is going to be butchered horribly because it's Dutch, but I believe his name is pronounced Martin Baert. Yeah, you can tell me how it's really supposed to be pronounced in the comments below. Obviously, GameMaker8 and everybody who uh, contributed resources. Very helpful for me and other people who use 3D in their video games. So, that is a basic introduction to using Model Creator for GameMaker. As I said before, I'm definitely going to be making a separate video on using colors down here and textures at a later date. And if there is anything else that you would like me to do, uh, let me know and I'll try to get around to it. So, my name is Dragonite, I hope you all enjoyed that, I hope you all found it helpful, and I will see you all later.